Hi, this is Robin, and in this video I'm going to be talking about how to improvise with your photos using the mixer brush and the art history brush in Photoshop. Now, one way to improvise when processing your photos is to go painterly. Now, it's not something you necessarily want to do all the time, but it can be useful if you're making composites and you want to create elements for them. So, for instance, sometimes I'll use my photo and then use the techniques I'm going to show in this demo to make paintings out of them or murals that look painted and then I can put them into my composite just to decorate a room or something like that that I've made a composite with. You can also create mixed media elements so have part that's going to look painted and part photographic. You can create elements that then you're going to use a generative AI fill on to create different backgrounds. Another thing I was going to experiment with is when I travel, I often take pictures of skies that I can use as my own personal stock photography. So if I end up with a sky shot or a day where my shots are, the sky isn't so great, I can use a sky replacement using one of my own photos of skies. Well, if you get a sky with some clouds in it, you can use the techniques I'm going to show you today to kind of simulate dragging your shutter or doing a slow shutter speed so you sort of get a sense of the movement or motion of the skies. And then once you create that, save it and then be able to use it as a sky replacement. So again, these aren't things you're going to use in all genuine straight photography, but if you want, if you're either in a rut or you want to be creative or are working with composites, the techniques I'm going to show you can be very useful. Now, I am not a painter, an illustrator, or a graphic designer, but I've been learning the mixer brush and the art history brush to do some digital painting because those are digital painting tools in Photoshop. So that's what I'm going to share in this workshop. Um, the mixer brush, the first tool I'm going to show you, is a digital painting tool. And what it does is it lets you blend colors and tones and images as if they're wet paint. And I'll show how this works. So it does sort of simulate realistic painting techniques without you having to have painterly skills. So in other words, you can do the moral equivalent of a paint by number on your photos. And if you're too young to know what that is, there'd be almost like a coloring book with numbers and it would tell you what colors to paint and which parts of the picture. Well, this you're basically just painting on top of your own photos. So you don't have to know how to paint from scratch. Um, I'm going to demonstrate the digital painting method that I've used to turn some of my photos into artworks that, as I said, I can hang on the walls in my composites. And it's also a thing where, you know, not every photo of mine is stellar quality. So if it's less than stellar, I hate to sort of still throw it away. So this is, you know, I can kind of turn it into a painting and just be creative with it and just have something to play with and give me some creative outlet with my photography. The other tool I'm going to show you is the art history history brush. It's a bit quirkier than the mixer brush, so it paints with stylized strokes. It's good for creating textures that you could use as overlays or as backgrounds or a much more kind of textural painted look. Um, you could also, if you really are a skilled digital painter, use it to create underpaintings that you would put your other real paintings on top of as sort of a background or a base layer. So anyway, let's just get into the demos. I'll demonstrate and introduce the basics for both the mixer brush and the art history brush using this single photo right here. So let's just get into it. Okay, so in this demo number one, I'm going to show how to work with the mixer brush tool in Photoshop. We have these lily pads. You can see that the blooms are a little bit blurry. There's a lot of model color on the leaves. So to me, this kind of photo lends itself to being painted because it's, you know, not ideally perfect or pristine from a photographic standpoint. So to work with the mixer brush tool, first of all, you go to your toolbar. Mine is docked right, yours might be on the left, and just come down the tools. And this is the mixer brush tool right here. It looks like a paintbrush with a little drop of paint on it. Now, you may not see this depending on how your toolbar is set up. Um, your 
mixer brush tool might be docked along with your brush tool. I have customized my toolbar. If you don't see this mixer brush tool, you can right click on this little arrowhead and see if in your toolbar you see the mixer brush there. If you still don't see it, come to the bottom of your toolbar. You should see three little dots where I have the banana and right click there and go to where it says edit toolbar right there at the top and left click on that. And that brings up this customized toolbar pop up box. The left column shows all the tools that are currently in your toolbar. So if you scroll down, you'll see what tools are there. And you can see I already have the mixer brush and the art history brush on my toolbar that we're going to be working with today. If you don't see them there, look over in the right hand column under extra tools. Find the, either of those tools because you're going to need both if you're going to try to do the techniques that I'm showing here today. And then just click on the one that you need in your toolbar, continue to click and drag it over onto your toolbar. I'm not going to do it because mine is already there. So I'm just going to close this out. So that's the way that you can get that tool if you don't have it handy. Okay. All right, now to get started, do the same thing I always tell you to do in the videos, duplicate your background layer in the layers panel, drag it to the bottom of the layers panel to the box with the plus, which is the add new layer icon, or you can click on that background layer and do a control or command J to jump that background up. And I'm going to double click on those words and relabel this my reference. I'm just going to call it reference photo. OK, so this is the photo that we're going to use to paint from, as I said, with that color by numbers thing. This is going to be the thing with the, the moral equivalent of the um, open spaces with the numbers on them. All right. Now, again, we're going to come to the bottom of the layers panel, click on that add new layer icon again. So we get an empty layer and then I'm going to double click on that word and label this mixer brush layer. Okay, so this is where I'm going to be painting with the mixer brush. Now, the next thing we have to do is turn off the eye icon on your background layer because we don't want any opaque copy of your photograph there. All right, then click on your reference fo photo layer. If you didn't relabel it, it would say copy. And what you want to do is lower the opacity of this reference photo. So top of the layers panel, come to where it says opacity. You can either left click on the word opacity and drag and you'll see the numbers are going down or you can click on the little down arrow and just pull the slider. It's your preference. The reason I'm doing this is you want to lower the opacity enough that you can still see your photo to use as a reference, but it's not so high that you can't see the painting strokes. OK, so for my personal picture, I'm going to use the around 68, 65 to 70 percent. OK, so um, lower yours to where you can see it, but then you can still see the painting strokes over it. Now, what's going to happen with this mixer brush tool is the brush tip that you use is going to pick up the colors and tones from the reference photo. So that's why you want to be able to see what you're doing. OK, so now let's click on the mixer brush layer, the empty layer where we're going to do the painting. Make sure your mixer brush tool is active. You can tell it's active if it has the black behind it. And now for all of these tools in Photoshop, they each have their own options or settings that go with them. And the options bar is across the top of your interface up here. So before we start painting, we need to make sure that we have certain options set a certain way. It's almost like cooking, you know, you just lay everything out before you start the cooking so you're ready to go. All right, so the first thing is first is we have to pick a brush. So let's go here to the brush preset panel click that little down arrow and you can use a brush that you want, but I'm just going to work with a traditional soft 
brush okay so that's the one I'm going to use after you get familiar with it then you can start looking into the, like the legacy brushes and see if there's any oil paint brushes or acrylic brushes or heavier different kinds of brushes you want to play with but let's just start with the soft brush I like to set the hardness to somewhere between 60 to 75 percent so I'm just going to leave it at 65 for now till I see how this goes with this particular picture okay next we have to set the load so as we come over you see this little icon here it looks like a brush with a little up arrow so what that would do is if you were going to actually be painting on your image with colors versus trying to pick up the colors from the image you would be loading your brush with a color with that we're not going to do that so click to turn that off so you want to be sure there's no black behind that icon and you see this little transparency here the next icon is the clean brush after each stroke icon that you must have on so set it to clean because you don't want your strokes and your quote unquote paint to start getting muddy so you want this to clean after every stroke next we get to the box with the different types of presets that can be used here with the mixer brush so you want to select a preset or you can set your own custom and it what it will affect is these four categories of values right here wet load mix and flow and so if you do custom you can set these to whatever level you want and to save time on this video i am going to just put in the description below the video what the different alterations to these different settings will do so I'm not going to go through all of that this is just going to be a basic introduction that will get you started so you can start experimenting these are all a variety of different presets that Photoshop has included for you again I'm not going to show you all of them but I would say maybe moist or wet are the best ones to start with so let me just click on moist and what each of that pre those presets will do is they will all automatically set values for each of these categories depending on the preset so let's just leave it on moist and those okay then we come over and you can set the smoothing so it's this little circular icon here I have mine set to 15 percent the lower you go the less smoothing there will be the higher percent you go the more smoothing it will be what that smoothing means is, is if you're getting shaky or jittery types of strokes paint strokes as you go and you don't want it to have that jittery look you can gradually increase the smoothing so I typically leave mine around 12 to 15 percent but you can go higher or lower if you want depending on what you want to achieve so that is that then as we come across further definitely definitely you have to have sample all layers checked on like mine is so let's see if yours is checked off check that on because that's what we're doing we're sampling from a photograph of yours to create the painting and then the final thing that I want to mention here is this little thing that looks like a bullseye with a pen going into it I am going to for this demo be using a stylus and a drawing tablet which I would highly recommend for this kind of painterly work because it lets you um, apply pressure discriminately and just control where your strokes are going better but if you don't use that or you don't work with the stylus or you only want to work with the mouse that's fine if you're working the mouse leave it as it is if you're working with a stylus click on that and make sure there's black showing behind there so that you can get the benefit of the pen pressure from the stylus okay so now again let's just check back here be sure we're on our mixer brush empty layer and that the mixer brush the brush with the little paint drop is showing there now what I want to do is I'm going to pick up my stylus here and we're going to get painting now a general and you can see if you look at my um, green highlighter just shows you where I am the black circle in the center is my brush and my brush size so I'll show you how to adjust that as we go a general rule of thumb with painting is that start by painting with the darker colors then move to the medium colors and then move to the lightest colors so that way you don't end up with things muddying because you can put the lighter colors on top of the darker rather than smearing the darker colors into the lighter so 
I'm just going to start painting on here in what's the water in this pond and I'm just painting strokes and because this is painting you can do whatever length strokes you want for the look that you want okay and I'm just painting across because this is water and by the way I'm going to warn you I'm not going to paint this entire thing you're not going to have to sit here and watch me paint the entire image I just want to give you a sense see so I can go into these crevices and I'll just use less pressure if I'm coming in here so it doesn't overlap much and I'm not going to be too perfectionist about this now the other thing you'll notice as you watch what I'm doing here is go in one direction with your strokes when you paint so again I'm going in one direction there even if I shift direction I'm following the shapes and I'm only painting in I'm not going back and forth and back and forth because that will create muddiness in your painting so I'm just going in one direction when I'm painting here and I'll just do a few strokes without narrating so you can see where I am Okay, the leaf probably has some spines, so I'm following the shapes of those. The other thing, if you can see it, I don't know on the video, is you can see those transparency squares. So you're trying to paint to cover them. And again, because I'm just doing this quickly for a demo, I probably will miss some. you see you can drag your strokes and this is why you go from darker to medium to lighter because then you can overlap your lighter strokes into your darker okay now on something like the flowers I'm going to start from the back and work my way forward so that things don't, don't get too smeary and you can definitely depending on the kinds of strokes you want and the coverage area that you want make your brush size smaller with the left bracket key or larger with the right bracket key so you can see where it's picking up the color and the tones on the transparent layer from my reference layer Let me just get a little bit more in here and then I'll show you what's happening. As I said, you can use different types of brushes besides the soft brush. Okay, so let me just stop there for a moment and I'm going to turn off the eye visibility on this mixer brush layer. And then now you can see if I turn off the reference photo turn it back on you can see where you can paint and now you can see what is being picked up on this layer so it is giving you a painted look it also lets you see where you've missed area so if you need to go back but definitely if you're doing something like this and you want to get the entire image then you definitely do have to paint over the entire image let's say you're doing some kind of a composite and you want it to be primarily photographic but you want to composite in some elements that might be sort of painted looking just for a different look so all you might have to do is paint one element in your image select it and then move it with your move tool over into your composite base another thing you can do is let's say you like these lily uh, the the, fl the floral part of the lily pads but you don't care for the leaves in this particular image then you could just paint the lily pad flowers and then go into your selection tool make a selection of them invert the selection and then run a generative fill and try to generate a different background 
depending on whatever kind of background, whether you want different lily pad leaves or whether you want to put them into a different scene, you can do things like that. And it was painting this blue water that made me think about the idea that if you had a blue sky with clouds in it, it wouldn't do you any good to do it just with pure blue sky. You could very low do some dragging and it might give a very in maybe selectively you know with the clouds do some dragging and it would look like you'd had a slow shutter speed and the clouds were moving so the whole point of this particular video is not to turn you into a digital artist per se but to say hey we can be creative and improvisational with our photographs okay so let's just stop there because i don't think you need to watch me paint the entire image so i had already painted earlier just to save you having to sit here and watch me. So you can see how it ends up with sort of a painterly look. And depending on the preset that you use or the custom settings that you make, the type of brush you use, the size of the brush you use, the hardness or softness of the brush you use, you can get different looks than this. So I'd say the whole point is these are the basics. You can experiment to see with your own images what it is that you want to accomplish. So we've kind of gone from, oops, helps if you hit the image <laughs> icon. There's the original photo and there's the painted version. So you can see you can have some fun with playing with this if you want to. Okay, so now I am going to say that that was all that I was going to show you with um, this particular tool, the mixer brush tool right here. So what I want to do next is show you how to use the art history brush tool. And what I'm going to do is just pause this for a moment and get set up. I'm going to use the same image, but I want to spare you having to look through me doing all my little adjustments here. Okay, so now this is going to be the second demo. And in this demo, I'm going to show how to work with the art history brush tool also in the toolbar. So the icon in here is my toolbar docked, right? So the icon for the art history brush looks, and you can see I've customized my toolbar. So I keep these artsy tools all in one place is this one right here. And it looks like a paintbrush with a little flourishy kind of a swirl on it. So left click on that and make sure there's black behind it so it's active. So you wanna have now for the art history brush tool, the paintbrush with the little swirl icon active there. And definitely the art history brush tool is a more quirky kind of tool. It produces very stylized brush strokes. You can use it to do paintings too that have a lot of texture or unique looks to them. I tend to use it a lot if I want to create overlay textures to put over photos or even to put over my mixer brushed digital paintings. And then I would typically reduce the opacity a little bit or and add a blend mode to combine them. Um, but you don't have to use both of these together. I'm just showing you can use them both together or you can use them alone. So it's optional, it's up to you, depending on a look you're going for. Okay, so I would describe the art history brush as more high maintenance than the mixer brush, because there are some mix uh, musts that you must keep in mind in order to use it. So first of all, you need to work with a content layer for the art history brush, not an empty layer like we did for the mixer brush. Your image that you're working on must be 8-bit or it won't work. And if you alter your image in any way, so if you, for instance, if you do change it from 16-bit or 32-bit to 8-bit, or if you crop your image or resize it, then you must create a snapshot of the altered layer and then say, okay, Art History Brush, work with this state of my image as the version to work with. And I'm going to show you how to go through this. Okay, so, but I'm just telling you, those are the requirements is if you alter from your original image at all, you are going to have to tell the brush which history state as they're called. So every time you do something 
in Photoshop, you create what's called a history state. So you can step backwards through what you've done. And so if you alter your image, you're going to have to tell it which state is the image to work with. OK, so let's just start with the demo here. So first of all, as usual, we're going to duplicate the background layer. You can either drag the background to the bottom of your layers panel to the Add New Layers icon or you can press or come ah, my mouth isn't working a control or command J and jump that up to a new layer. So now I've got a copy there. Maybe it's easier to just drag it. Then you don't have to say jump. OK, and now uh, be sure that you have your art history brush active and the black is behind it. I showed you in the first demo um, if you don't have that brush in your toolbar, how to go to the bottom of the toolbar and drag in a tool that you don't already have. So you can just refer to earlier in the video if you don't already have that tool in your toolbar. Now, again, as usual, we have to set options for this tool before working with it. So first things first is we're going to come up to the options bar for this art history brush. And again, the options bar runs across the top in Photoshop. And we want to select a brush preset from right here from the brush preset panel. And again, I think I'm just going to work with the soft brush, but you can get definitely more interesting looks if you have any um, legacy brushes that are either um, watercolor, acrylic, oil paint, things like that. You can get some really interesting looks. But just to start and get used to the tool, I think it's fine to work with this um, soft brush. I'm going to put my hardness for the brush up to somewhere like around 65 to 70%. Yeah, let me stay in that range there. OK, and then I just click up here to close that box. Next, we come over to mode. You can ignore this. This is like blending modes, opacity. I leave that alone. Next thing we come over to is style. So these are the different types of strokes that you can use with the art history brush. And you can see there's a whole list of them. And you can try them out on your own. I'm not going to have to go through every single one of them. Um, but they are definitely quirkier. And they'll be affected by how large or small your brush is. I'm going to set mine to dab to start because dab is the closest to typical strokes that you would put down when painting. All right, the next thing we come over to is this area setting. So anyway, so style is the different brush stroke designs and area is the area the stroke will cover in pixels. So this is independent of the brush size. So you can say, OK, when I put down this dab stroke, cover either 60 pixels or 80 or 100 pixels or less, you know, so you can see what the impact is. It'll definitely be tighter and look more realistic if it's lower and it'll get further spread out and more interesting or unique looking the higher you go. Ditto with the brush size. The smaller it is, the closer it'll stay to the look of your image. The further out you go, it'll more distort it. So again, if you're doing things like creating overlays like I do, sometimes I want to distort it. OK, the next setting in the options bar is tolerance. And what tolerance affects is the amount of change to your image. So I typically leave mine between 0 and 2%. I keep it very low because the lower it is, the more it applies strokes anywhere in your image. So you can keep painting over and doing different strokes and having different effects. The higher the number, the less stroke impact there will be in your image. So it won't paint over your previous strokes as much or as strongly. So that's why I said I like to see impact, so I keep it low. If you want to see less impact as you go along, put the tolerance number higher. OK, now we've got the layer we want to work on, which is my background layer. We've got the Art History Brush Tool active. We've got all our options for that brush set. And now, oh, wait a minute here. Look inside my green highlighter. There is a circle with a black line in it. That means that this Art History Brush is not currently usable. I told you it was high maintenance and finicky. So the first thing I'm going to check for this image is if it is an 8-bit image, because we need to work on an 8-bit image. So I'm going to come up to the Image menu at the upper left in the interface, click on that, 
come to mode, come to the flyout, sure enough, it's a 16-bit image. So I'm going to change this to an 8-bit image so that I can, oh wait, still can't work with this. So even though I've changed it to an 8-bit image, it still is not recognizing it because what did we do? We changed the state, as I talked about before. We made a change to the appearance of the image by changing it from a 16-bit to an 8-bit. That's a step in the history. So what we need to do is come over to the history panel. Right here is my tab on the right. Click on that to expose it and see, you can see what happened. I made a layer copy. I changed it to an 8-bit. So now what you need to do is at the bottom of the history panel, there's this little camera icon. You want to make a snapshot of what this current state is because that's going to become basically your new background layer that you can paint on top of. That's what you need to do for the art history brush to recognize that it's a paintable layer. So just left click once on that little camera icon, then you come to the scroll bar and you see it says snapshot there left click in that empty box and look at what it's done. It's put the art history brush tool icon in front of that snapshot saying, okay, history brush, art history brush, use this snapshot, this history state as the canvas to paint on. Once you get that set, click on your layers panel and now you can start painting. Now, Typically, I would probably want to make a duplicate layer, but then again, you would have to capture that history state if you're going to do it. All right, so let's just start painting here and see what happens. In fact, let me make this larger, zoom in a little bit so you can see what's happening. Okay, so I've got it set on dab and these kinds of settings. So look what's happening as I'm clicking with a mouse this time just to show you the kinds of dab strokes it will make, okay? So now let me try making this paintbrush even smaller. So I'm going to use, so if you look at my green highlighter here, I'm going to use the left bracket key and watch that little white, That the white is the brush tip. So it's making it smaller. So now if I dab, see, you can see it's making smaller, more controlled dabs. Now you don't have to, it, with this one, depending on what you want to accomplish, unlike the mixer brush where I said to paint in the direction, this you can just do things like paint across and it'll put little dabs down. See, because I'm not following the shape of these petals at all. Let me zoom back out again so you can see. And let me make this bigger. The brush, now I'm hitting the right bracket key. So you can see what it's doing here. So again, you just go in the directions that you want your strokes to go and to achieve the effect you want to achieve. So that is the dab with these kinds of settings and this is a relatively hard so again let me just put this hardness down so let me call it some more soft and let me show you see you can get a different look and I'll make the brush even bigger with the right bracket case so you, you can see how you could create with something like this how I would create overlays that I could textural overlays that I could put on other things so then with this let me move this up. Whoops, I killed the whole thing here. <laughs> I had moved my background. All right, so you can just paint over this. And um, if you make the brush size smaller, then you can bring back more of the shapes again. Okay, so you can paint over multiple times using different size brushes, different size hardnesses. 
if we want to see just for kicks what some of these other here's tight short loose long see it, it, they definitely give you quirky shapes, as I said. So that's why I said if I want to do a more painterly sort of look, I, for mine, leave it on dab. Let me just pull this over since I messed things up here. There we go. Okay, so those were the things that I wanted to show you in terms of how to paint. Now, let's just say for a moment here, I'll show you something else that I hadn't really planned to show you, that you tried one of these other strokes and you decided it's not really a look that you want. You can, on your tool panel, look for your history brush tool. And again, that's why I clustered these. So if you left click on that, that one looks like a little brush with a, a go back arrow, then you can paint over, you said, oh, gee, I shouldn't have used that quirky stroke. That was kind of kooky there and too much of this. So you can paint over, if you haven't saved or done some other subsequent action, then that's the history brush. It'll bring back the history of a previous step. Then you can go back to your art history brush and get a more normal kind of look or whatever it look you were going for initially and before you experimented and then bring back more of the kind of consistent look that you were going for. So I'd say, you know, have fun with this. The standard brush presets are you know, kind of cool. And that's of what I did over here. But, you know, there's certainly other brushes you can use. I'm trying to see. I think I have some art history brushes that I had gotten from other places. I don't know. Let me maybe try working with one of these and see what it will do. See. So if you have some interesting brushes you want to experiment with besides just the traditional ones, you can get some really interesting painted effects and looks. So that was what I wanted to, to show you as far as working with these brushes and uh, getting a more painterly look using your photos as a base. So one other optional thing I will show you here as a final demo, so you don't have to do this if you don't want to, is to do some finishing. If you do want to give it a real sort of painted surface look too. So let me first of all go back to my neutral tool. And in this final optional demo, I'm going to drag this down and make a duplicate of that layer. And I'm going to call this my texturize layer. So it's just a duplicate of the art history brush layer that I just painted. So now let's say you've created your painting and you do want to use it either just as something to print and look like a painting or you want to put it into a composite and have it look like a painting you put into the composite. So from that new layer, go up to the filter menu at the top, left click on filter, come down to where it says texture, come fly out to this pop out menu, come down to where it says texturizer. So it's filter, texture, texturizer, left click. And let me make this smaller so we can see what we're working with. There's the image. Okay, and then come over to the far right control panel where the settings are and under texture you can choose from several textures that are in Photoshop. So there's a brick, there's a burlap, there's this canvas, there's a sandstone. So sometimes if I'm doing something to look like a mural and I want to put it on a building then I'll put a sandstone texture on it. But for something like this I think I would choose the canvas. And then you can adjust these other settings to go with it. So if you look at the scaling you can drag that slider and it's a tighter canvas or it's a looser more obvious 
dimensional canvas. Hopefully you can see that on the video. You can adjust the relief left and right so there's less relief and more relief. So again, just adjust that to taste, to look, have the canvas look the way you want. And then you can adjust where the light is coming from. So where it's going to be hitting. So just because the light is hitting the lily pads from the top, and if you were to put this in a room, you know, where there was a light or something, then you'd want the light shining and casting the shadow on the canvas. So you can click on this little down arrow and say where you want the light to be shining to show the texture of your canvas. So I'll choose to Top. and then just click OK and you can see it has brought back that texture now again this is kind of extreme but I wanted it to be something you could see in the video so that is just a way to give a painterly like treatment to a photo that you have treated in a painterly way by digital painting it with either the mixer brush the art history brush or both. So anyway, that is my intro to both the mixer brush and the art history brush with a quick mention of the history brush. I'd say have fun experimenting with them. Um, it's a fun way to improvise with your photos. It might, you know, photography is creative. It might spark other ideas for other ways to work with your photos, whether you're going to end up actually using it or just use it as a way to get out of a creative rut. Um, and, you know, it creates kind of cool digital paintings, but you can also use it to create, if you really blob the, the painting details or the photo details, you can create overlays and textures that you can use on top of other photos or images too. So have fun.